the four projects that you are speaking about and which are all alive. One is Memory Love Book, mm -hmm. uh, Aligo Kids, Aligo Media, and Hasu. Yes. Uh, maybe could you just start by sharing briefly, like what are the four uh, projects about? Oh, I didn't. I didn't share with you. I'm still single, right? So if there is like a guy, like uh, like sorry, something hearing his um, podcast, or um, happy to reach out. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. We we record the video so they can actually see. You. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Okay. Um. So um. Uh, like actually in 2016 or 17. Um. At that time, I was in the US. And I spent lots of time um, learning online, and I learned uh, a lot of course, like in Coursera, in the LinkedIn, and uh, a lot of other sites. And I, at the time, I was like, like, why do I like learn online so much over here? But in meanwhile, in Vietnam, like, um, of like for. 22 years, I didn't learn anything like online really in Vietnam. And I, I feel like it's it's kind of like something is missing out. So um, so I started with the, the online stuff. I, I want to do something like create an online uh, learning platform. Uh, and I began with research. And at that time in Vietnam, there were um, like three uh, startups that, um, uh, that teach Uh, people like uh, adults really like great skills but uh, at that time they were like not really like not so many um, platforms that teach skill for kids so I wanted to dig down the, in deep, deeply like more deeply inside its, um, this, this industry and then I found out that um, the, the parents here really wants kids to learn English so there are like thousands of English course over there But to, to really learn how to protect themselves from the society and from the danger out there, there were not so many. And uh, I was kind of like, um, um, it, it, it feels like at that time, you know, when I read the newspaper, there were so many accidents and so many um, uh, sexual abuse um, cases in Vietnam. And the kids and even the parents don't know how to react. And they kind of avoid talking about that. So uh, I was like, okay, I'm gonna do something about the, the issues. And uh, what I did first was that I went all the way um, to the North um, New York to see um, a very like um, world famous author. And she write the best book ever about uh, to teach um, kids how to protect themselves. And she, because she has She has, um, okay, I, I will not talk about it here, I think, because may, I, I may send her the link. Uh, but she was really impressive and she gave me a lot of um, uh, confidence and, and, and passion to move on and work uh, with, within this industry. So uh, I went back to Vietnam and then um, started the first project uh, on, and teach um, the kids how to protect themselves and teaching soft skill. And the first course ever was um, the sexual abuse prevention course in Vietnam. And it was uh, pretty successful because I, uh, because at least like we uh, touched kind of over, uh, I think uh, 60,000 kids and the families. And we went to school, we um, distributed uh, through an online platform And we also like later when we uh, struggle with the online platform and then we change it to um, the, the, the audio type and uh, the book type. And it was, it went pretty well. So that, that was my first startup with Alio Kids. And then because we have the, the team to produce cartoon um, and they are really good at that. So, um, so the uh, education publishing house started to contact us and then the offer like, do you want to, you know, like uh, make a cartoon for us or make, um, at that time it was the, uh, the elect electric books, right? Like online books. Okay. It's, it's called online book. 
So, so we made cartoon and uh, and the books for them, and then we started to uh, reach out to more uh, clients like uh, Honda or uh, some other government uh, 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 partners, and then we produce cartoon for them. And mostly, it's uh, it's um, it's uh, feature the social issues here and uh, teach people skill how to overcome difficulties. So that's basically my second uh, startup uh, about, uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's more like an agency. It's, it's like a cartoon agency. So this is my second. And my third was actually started from the second. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, okay, so I'm, I'm trying to, to make it short. Uh, no, we, have, we have a lot of time. Huh? Okay. And my third, um, my third project is one of the projects that I love the most. Um, it's related to, to my uh, grandfather. Like 10 years ago, uh, my grand grandfather was just, you know, he was sick and he stayed at home. He spent a lot of time at home. And uh, he only felt happy when somebody came and talked to him. But uh, I can only come like three times a week. That's, that's the most, that's the best that I could could do because I have to go to school and my parents have to go to work. So I only have like three times a week with him. But his stories is always incredible. So that's why I felt, I, one day I told him, uh, why don't you write a book? Um, just, you know, like, you, know, you don't have to publish it. You can write it for the family. And then together we wrote a book. And, you know, um, it was the first time that my family really understand him. Like we, we know that he always loved the family and he sacrificed a lot, but, but there are so many things that we didn't know before. <clears throat> and um, a very sad thing is that um, on the day that we published the book, he passed away, like on the same day. Uh, so uh, in the first 49 days after he passed away, all my family sit down to, sat down together and, and uh, read the book. And uh, we felt something that we never felt before. And um, I could see that um, the, uh, the last five months that he spent to write the book was the, the, the best time ever for him. And he always feel passion. He always feel love and he always feel something very positive. And he didn't really feel the sickness. So that's what I'm always feel happy about. Mm, so that's why I really want to spread that passion um, to other families because I really understand the feeling. Because you know, like you can, there's some so many things that you cannot buy with money, like memories, one of the thing. So we come out later, like years later. I try to um, try to do something for other family as well by helping other family write books. And uh, not only uh, elderly people, but uh, also mothers can write for the children or the kids can write for the parents or the um, wife and husband can write for each other. You know, like anybody can, anybody can write to each other. So it's, it's a very meaningful project to us. And I remember all the, every single members in our project, um, the, the employee, I mean, um, they are really passionate about it because one person lost his mother and he always he regret like not doing something for his mother before she passed away. And another person really care about the family, but she has to live separately from the family for a long time. You know, so uh, to us, like the project was really meaningful. So that is the third one. And uh, the fourth one, the final one is Hasu. The uh, actually the startup that uh, I really put, uh, I really spent a lot of time and and love and and all the passion for it. Uh, it's um, an, a platform for elderly. Why um, the reason why I came up with the platform for elderly is that um, still you know like old old story with my grandfather. He was the first one. A very funny thing is that he was the first one who taught me how to use computer. So nowadays we think, oh, 
all people cannot use the technology. No, we are wrong. Like, like 20 something years ago, he taught me how to use computer. And at that time, I was so afraid to, you know, even close the game. I thought I broke the computer. <laughs> like, I was so afraid at that time. But um, he showed, he really showed me step by step how to use computer. So I really, um, you know, this day, elderly people have to be, uh, have to be like spend a lot of time at home and uh, separate, live separately from the outside world. And they are lonely, like 70 something, uh, 75% of them spend a lot, uh, like spend more than uh, six hours. I, I remember the statistic, like on TV. And that's the only thing they can do like at home. And hardly, they hardly have time to talk to other people, like the family. It's, it's pretty like far away. It's, uh, it's kind of like distance. We can feel the distance between the generation within the family. So they, so um, from that, uh, I felt like they need more, like they need more um, attention from the society. But uh, the problem is why, uh, like how we could do the project, how we could do something for them. And then at first, like, I didn't uh, really think about an application or anything. I was just, you know, going out there and and, uh, and started with uh, the class to teach you know, elderly people how to use a uh, smartphone. So that was the start. And then we did a lot of survey and, uh, and experience and we uh, and ex experiment and we study on their behavior. And then later we come up with the solutions that um, the uh, one thing that elderly people, any elderly people care of is that they want to live healthy because when they, they are healthy, when I say health, when I say about health, it's not really uh, about physical health only, but uh, according to WHO, health is the, um, health is the, um, um, like the, um, what can I say? Health is the complete state of uh, physical, mental, and uh, social well-being all together. It's not uh, merely the absence of disease. Hmm. So, um, so we build a platform based on based on the definition. Like we want to support them uh, to live more physically healthy, more mentally healthy, and uh, connect with each other. Like connect with the friends, family, and the society. So we believe that uh, the platform is the, uh, the, the solution that we came out with.